Hello. Do you know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God? Listen carefully as Bishop Humphrey Irumaka brings you the rightly divided word of truth and watch as your life changes for the better. Please stand to your feet as we receive our Father, a giant that has given birth to many giants like us, to be a blessing to us. Please welcome with me the presiding bishop of Woodman Assembly, Dr. Humphrey Aromaka. Welcome with the Jesus child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. It's the sound of victory. It's the sound of victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, let the sound. Let the sound of rejoicing fill the heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. It's the sound of victory. of your name flowers grow and the desert blooms again like fire In winter, winter cold like pure Precious God, Jesus, Jesus, at the mention of your name. Jesus, at the mention Your flower will grow, Amen. and your desert will bloom again, like fire in winter cold, like pure precious gold, Jesus, at the main. Thank you, Father. One more time, worship him this morning. Thank you. Lift your hands and say something to him. Jesus, have the mention of 
celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Body can no no wrong. Be your this morning I thank you for life if not for life a living dog is a better than a dead lion thank you for grace your grace has found me just as I am empty handed but I'm life in your Today is not my preaching day. I've just been brought forward to say a few words and I'll take my seat. You don't need to stress me today, Abby. I'm just a newborn baby, you know. Praise God. Amen. I was born on Wednesday. I shouldn't be preaching on Sunday, you know. 
Praise God. I have a word from the Lord for somebody here. And that word is coming from 2 Kings chapter 10, verse 30. 2 Kings chapter 10, verse 30. 2 Kings chapter 10, verse 30. It says, can we read it together? And the Lord said unto who? Jehu. Because thou hast done well in executing that which is right in my eyes and has done unto the house of Ahab according to all that was in my heart thy children of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel this was God's promise and in the mouth of two witnesses shall a thing be established God said this to Jehu in verse chapter 10 verse 30 and he repeated it again in 2 Kings chapter 15 verse 12 2 Kings chapter 15 verse 12 this was the word of the Lord which he spake unto who? Jehu, saying, Thy sons shall sit on the throne of Israel unto the fourth what? Generation. And so it came to pass. This morning in few minutes, I will speak to you about having a generational mentality say that to me having a generational mentality and from this day let everything you do be governed by this understanding now jehu was a terrible king god raised him to flush out the house of Ahab and he did it as God spoke to him no sentiment he did exactly what God spoke to him to do and after he did it he may have expected that God will come to him and say you will live forever you will reign forever and your reign will be trouble free this will happen to you this will happen to you but God spoke to him and say to him, what you have done is your next generation up to fourth generation that will enjoy the benefits. So my question now is, what is the blessing for Jehu? If you walk to a man who is struggling now and you tell him, because of what you have done, your next generation and next generation, he will ask you, what is my own? Come on now. Wouldn't you ask such question? Which one be my own now? Hezekiah was told that after you, because of what you have done, princes will be taken from this land and made eunuch in a foreign land. What did he say to God? It's okay. As far as it is not done in my time. Have we seen two personalities here? One is thinking generationally and another one was thinking otherwise. The beauty of a man that thinks generationally is that God rewards him with long life. Because God, if God promises you that your children, children will bless you. It means you will live to see your children, children. If God promises you that your children will be great, he will keep you alive to see and enjoy a glimpse of it. Am I communicating? So whenever God, a man thinks generationally, God gives him long life to have a litmus test of what it is. 
Thinking generationally will make you do present sacrifices that will touch your skin today. It's only a man that thinks generationally that will suspend buying a car for himself to pay the child's school fees. Am I communicating? That will even not build a house for himself to ensure that the children go to school. But those who don't think that way are selfish. They lavish everything on themselves. For us as a church, there are certain luxuries I can live in. But I deny that luxury and rather make imputes to this work because this work will outlive me. Because Whatever we do, we go beyond us. When we were doing the foundation of this building, we dug it very deep. It could have been a makeshift. After 20 years, it would have been gone. This house, as fresh as it is, is like 19 years old now. Am I communicating? In one 20 years to come, all you need here is to repaint and uh, renovate. But the structure will still be standing. Whatever you want to do in ministry. I started ministry several years ago. I became a national preacher at the age of 26. And I can look back and I can find a lot of my colleagues that nobody even hears about them today. I knew when they rained on billboards. I knew when they rained on uh, all things that didn't matter. I knew all that they wanted was to ride flashy cars, carry mopole around and the rest of it. But I knew that those things were flash in the pan. I knew there are things we must do. For the next generation. It is the apostolic mindset that thinks for the next generation. That is why God said concerning Abraham, I know that he will bring up his children to follow me. Say amen. amen. From today, whatever impute you make here, don't do it haphazardly. Do it knowing that there is a generation that will be impacted. And let me have a good news for you. The beauty of that blessing is that the score of your generation when you are gone will still be credited to you. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? The goodwill, the good things that your generation is still doing when you are gone in heaven will still be credited to you. It will be coming up. You'll be getting a lot of it in heaven. Am I communicating? When Jesus came, he came to affect generation of humanity unlimited. Ask yourself a question. Is Jesus being only rewarded by those 12 men he ministered to in uh, Israel? Is he only rewarded in heaven today by the travel he did in Judea and uh, Samaria. No. Today, even in heaven, he is credited for how he has touched the entire humanity. He has died several years ago. But even in heaven, he's being celebrated by what he has done that will keep touching generations. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. Celebrate Jesus in the house. A man like Paul, Suffered in prison, did a lot of things, but he made sure 
He laid a solid foundation for the gospel. And today, wherever Paul is, in his time and his days on earth, he didn't fly a private jet. In his times and age, he didn't ride a Mercedes car. And then you look at such men and say, what was your gain? You only rode on horseback. You were flogged. You were persecuted. You were... Their reward is not just going to heaven. I've, I've told you here, the issue of going to heaven for us is an elementary gospel. I will see you all in heaven. Not by your strength, but by the mercies of God. Now the Bible says, whatsoever you pray, believe you have received and you shall have. Is that the word of God? Now when you pray about a car, you believe, you receive, and you had. Abi, what about going to heaven? The same faith is applicable. How many of you here have prayed going to heaven? Talk to me now. Who among you have prayed going to heaven? Believe you have received and you shall have. I will see you in heaven. Am I communicating? Why do you want to apply faith on physical things? Then the main spiritual thing, you don't want to apply faith. Some of you are still in doubt whether you go to heaven. Who is in doubt? Lift your hands because we need to lay hand on you. We, don't, we will slap, slap, slap you so that your consciousness will be revived. Say amen in the house. Say amen in the house. So I'm telling you that men like Paul, men like Jesus, while they are there, they will still receive the benefit of the widespread of the gospel. They paid the price. And they will still be acknowledged for what they have done. Because if they had not laid that foundation, there wouldn't have been a continuity. For we are founded upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. A man like Hezekiah died as a very young man. He was 30-something years. When he was told what will happen, he said, as far as it is not done in my time, God, when I'm not here, you can do anything. Finish the people frustrated. Just do whatever you want to do. Destroy them as far as it's not this time that I'm, I'm on seat. I'm on seat. As far as I, it's not now. Just do whatever you want to do. And God looked at him and said, I have been touched, but I add more 15 years to you. A man that was 35 years or 30 something years, you add 15 years and he died. Now, good death with that. Couldn't he have lived longer? Couldn't he have reigned longer? But because he did not have a generational mindset, God removed him from the way so that he put somebody who can think about tomorrow. Part of the problem with our nation today is that our policymakers are not thinking of the next generation. They're only thinking what we can gather today. Those voted into power are only thinking of what we can gather today. They look at men like Mbakwe as a fool who transformed the Igbo land, built places. He didn't die a rich man. At some point, he depended on people to contribute money for his foreign medical bill. So somebody could look at such men and felt they were fools. But they were not fools. I want to tell everyone here under the sound of my voice, whatever you do and whichever position you find yourself, think generationally. Do things that will outlive you to the glory of God the Father. Say amen in the house. Do you know best... One day I was at the airport and this young lady, beautiful young lady, came to me and took my bag. She was dragging it and I'm like, can I help? Say, no, sir, don't touch anything. I knew she wasn't an airport staff. And when she finished and got me to enter the flight, she now looked at me and said to me, I'm one of the first graduates of your school, World Base Montessori Academy. I'm through with school. 
I've graduated and I'm married. So I opened my hands and gave her a good hug. Say amen. amen. If we were to run that school because of the profit, we may not have been on. But the fact that there are generations that are being touched. I rest my case this morning. Think generationally. I'm so glad to stand in this church today that I now stand here to wade children I dedicated at this altar. I now stand here to welcome children I raised in children department who are now having doctorate degrees. Doctor. The docos, am I communicating? What can make a father more happy than to say this? When I bow to you, I'm not bowing to you as a person. I'm bowing to the greatness of your future. Your tomorrow will be better than your today. Everything you do here, don't think about yourself. Think about how, when we are no longer here, how the things we do today will still be giving us credit and a lot in heaven. It's all an investment that does not last, does not end. That's why in Christianity, nothing is temporary with us. Everything we have is eternal life. It's eternally based. The good work we do is eternally based. Nothing we do ends here. That's why through the canteen, do your best. Because it's waiting for you in your future. And death does not terminate your best. That's why the Bible says, even when the righteous die, they come with their works. Have you read that in your Bible? They do what? They come with their work. So think generationally. Don't be Hezekiah. Rather be an Abraham. Rather be an Isaac. Rather be a Jacob. Who will speak into the tomorrow of his children. And it will come to pass. Pay your children's school fees. It's not a labor. It's an investment. Go extra mile. Do something for somebody. It has an eternal value. I've been in ministry and we remain in ministry because my thinking about ministry is not ephemeral. It's not as elusive as a mirage. It's a constant mindset that when it is all over, my credits will still come above. This week has been a wonderful week for me. I have received comments from all over the world, even where I thought what I did didn't matter. I have met people who said, you, I read one of your books and my life changed. I have met people who said, when you, I, I, I was in the US, Maryland, and a woman ran into me. She looked at me, she couldn't remember my name, but she said to me, for Jonathan's sake, she said, this was the message you preached in our church when you came to Hong Kong. And now I'm in the U.S. Say amen in the house. Amen. I had a great meeting at Abia State University. And today I have had a lot of friends and people that I've met all over the world. I was at Kogi Government House one time. And a, a smart military officer came to me and say, I got born again and spoke in tongues the same day you preached in our school. Today, I have a lot of top clergy, bishops, all over Nigeria. And some of them met me. I have been a, a, a teaching leadership in Pres Presbyterian Church for three consecutive years. And one day, the man that, who is their general secretary then, who was bringing me back and forth, he said to me, sir, you didn't know where you touched my life. You changed my life 
when you run several years teachings at um, University of Calabar School of Ministry, it was under that teaching I took a decision to be a, a pastor. And today, I am now one of the of top high excellence in Presbyterian Church. I have seen bishops who passed through my spiritual kindergarten. And today, they are top there. So, ladies and gentlemen, your case will not be different. Join me to think generationally. Do things that after we are here, will still be on ground. I love you with the love of God, and I celebrate you all. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Clap if you want to clap. Thank you. Thank you, church. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, before I, I drop the microphone, I have many friends in the house today who has joined to celebrate us but one of them chose to surprise me this morning and another one too uh, i want two of them to come because i know one of them will quickly maybe heading to the airport just to come forward and bring a word of felicitation uh major njoko please come i celebrate you Please come. Please come. Please come. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He is a reverend. He's a chaplain. He is one of those men I met teaching Presbyterian uh, leadership. So bring your word of felicitation to the church. Bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Indeed, I'm so glad to be here and to be part of the celebration of our Father in God. I call him God's general. Positive. Positive. <laughs> Hallelujah. He has made great impacts in our lives. Like he said, in the past about three years or thereabout, he has been consistent, taking us during ministers' retreats, as a church in the Presbyterian Church of Nigeria, where some of us also are parts. So when he said his birthday celebration is today, I have to find a way to come around to battle the celebration. Indeed, we are proud of him. He is indeed a great instrument in the hands of God, raising other younger generation of generals that will live after him. We wish you long life, sound health and sound mind and greater heights in the days ahead in the name of jesus happy birthday to you sir thank you celebrate thank you we also bring greetings to you the lord will continue to increase the ministry here in jesus name Amen. thank you sir Amen. praise the lord and here in our midst today it's one of my very good friends He's in Lagos this weekend, and he chose to come and honor me today. He is the Federal Minister of Solid Minerals in the person of His Excellency. Praise the Lord. Honorable Uche Oga. He is in our midst. I want him to come and bring word of felicitation. You Praise. came for a solid worship. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be here this morning and I'm fulfilled. Before I say anything, Pastor, I want to sing for you. There's a, 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 there's a song the Lord laid in my heart that I should sing for you. Giyonyeji Otayakeli Gwenuwa Ki onyo kono ya nadi ya bangwe gini kai geji kelegin 
nam gini kai geji aburu muzuwo there is nothing we can give to thank god for your life because we are celebrating you today I, I, I was just telling you that the last I came was when I was in the bank. I came to the other church. And I didn't know that you have built a very awesome edifice. I thank God for you. I thank God for you. And I want to, I want to join the church, the entire world, to celebrate you. Like I was telling you yesterday, I didn't know it was Pastor Choma that posted it in her wall. And I said, oh, my God. So I said, okay, I will call you. And I forgot. And... Fortunately, we met, and I wanted to worship with you today to the end of the service, but unfortunately, I already fixed a meeting with the chief of Nava staff by 2 o'clock, so I'll be going back to Abuja. But like I said, I will have time to come back to worship with you. The, you, you have touched life in this generation. God has used you to do great work both in full gospel and every other places. And you see, what you are doing is what you have preached. It's a generational, uh, you are a generational messenger of God because that you have touched life in so many ways. And God will continue to bless you and keep you. The Lord will continue to grow your ministry from strength to strength. And I bring you a federal blessing. Because, yes, as a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I bring him greetings from the presidency that God will continue to keep you and he will continue to show his grace. You have done so much in this, in this kingdom. And I pray, you know, God gave David a blessing. And that blessing, he called it a covenant. And it's a covenant of salt. And the same covenant is what you have with God. Because it's generational. And God will continue to keep you. And that covenant of salt that God has established with you, we continue to lead you and continue to make this ministry to grow from strength to strength, from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. I wish you a happy birthday awesome birthday i thank you with my dad. people are looking younger and younger every day and god will continue to you see god will continue to renew your strength thank you so much for being a blessing to the world and god will continue to keep you in jesus name Amen. thank you for coming celebrate him honorable minister of solid minerals honorable uche oga thank you Thank you. Now, like I said, a man like David, do you think he will only be rewarded for his dealing with those small tribes in Israel? Huh? The Bible said he has separated the middle wall that separated us from the commonwealth of Israel. Amen. These were men who did so much, who made us part of the Davidic covenant. So don't think just about yourself. Think about what you will do that will keep affecting generations. I love you with the love of God. I'll be back when next required. Be seated. Thank you. We hope you've been blessed by the word. For counseling and more information, please visit number 12, Dr. Fashion Street, Okota, Lagos. You can also call 0906-833-5605. We hope to hear from you. God bless you.